Hi guys, hope wherever you are and whatever you've been doing, you've had a sensational day. All right, COVID-19, now we're really in unprecedented times and we're each navigating our way through uncharted territories with what seems to be without a map. You know, situations are changing, um, not by the day, but actually by the hour. So despite this, one thing still remains the same and that's the facts. And that's what we're here to chat about today with our very special guest, Belinda Joyce, midwife and maternal child health nurse with over 20 years experience. Now, if you have or a baby or you're expecting a baby, you may be worried about them catching the coronavirus, particularly after the media reports of an Australian infant recently diagnosed. Well, if that's you, definitely this chat is something you need to, to, to listen to. No, um, before we get into to all of this, um, the facts and, and, and speaking to Belinda, I just wanted to just mention, you know, with the recent toilet paper crisis amongst any, everything that's been going on at the supermarkets, what's been really most disappointing was really just the lack of concern for others. Um, and it really did seem that everybody's completely out for themselves. Um, one thing uh, for sure is the fact that no one is immune um, from this virus and we really are all in this together. This is something that we really need to remember. It's not every man out for themselves or in this together. So just to let you know, the team here at Kibipedia will do our utmost really to help support you during this time. And it's our aim to be able to deliver trusted evidence-based information and advice to keep you informed and really help you reduce some of that anxiety around this crisis and enable you to be the best parent that you can be. And after all, this is why I created Kiddypedia, and this is what our mission and our vision stand for. Now, a little bit about our guest. Belinda Joyce is a midwife um, and maternal child health nurse with over 20 years experience. She's also a mother of four and author of this fantastic book, Survive and Enjoy Your Baby. Her passion is in providing safe, evidence-based advice and, and options uh, to parents so they can find their own path to parenthood. Um, Belinda, through her nursing and midwifery career of over 20 years, has worked with thousands of parents during um, their newborn um, sort of phase in their life, uh, childbirth, education, prenatal, um, labour, birth, you name it. And as mentioned, that she's actually a maternal child health nurse based in Ballarat. So she um, is our guest today. First of all, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. Now, for everybody watching, um, we published your article titled Coronavirus, What Parents Really Need to Know. For someone that hasn't read the article, can you give us a little bit of an overview, what it's about and what inspired you to write it? Look, I was getting lots of questions about, um, you know, how do you catch it, um, ways to prevent it, how sick will my children actually get if they get it. Um, and I just thought if I could put the the actual facts down in an article with just brief um, information and get rid of all the rest. I could put a lot of parents' minds at ease. Yeah. So in this article, you've really consolidated um, the most up-to-date information um, from reputable sources such as the World um, Health Organization, UNICEF and the Australian government. So it's really worth a read. Um, so let's get stuck into your questions. So question number one, we've got... How can I prevent infection with coronavirus? Look, it is what I guess you've been hearing in the media. Wash your hands um, repetitively. Wash your hands. You can use some hand sanitizer as well, but washing your hands is just as good if you do a really good job of it and wash for at least 20 seconds. So doing that frequently, trying to reduce the amount of times you touch your face, um, because we do touch our face quite often. It's actually quite hard, um, but keep doing that. Um, if you do have any cough or cold, um, flu-like symptoms, actually talking to your healthcare professional, so your general practitioner, your doctor, um, and seeing if you do need to be tested for coronavirus. Um, sneezing into a tissue or into the crook of your arm. I'm sure you've been seeing that um, a lot in the media as well. Um, staying sort of further apart from people than you usually would. So social distancing, they're calling that. So a metre to a metre and a half away, um, if possible. Obviously in your own home though, that's different with your family. But when you're out and about at the supermarket um, and, and 
at work, if you're able to just have that little bit more distance between you, that really helps because um, you, you've got that space. Yep. Okay. Question number two. Now, what if my baby or children are diagnosed with the coronavirus? Look, the reassuring thing, I think, for parents is that coronavirus um, is really only infecting a very small amount of children and babies, and they're getting quite a mild disease from it. So very mild um, cold and flu symptoms. Um, the experts are actually a bit unsure whether more children are getting it and having very few or no symptoms. Um, and of course, they're not getting tested if they're not terribly sick. Um, so I think we should be reassured by that. If they did have some underlying chronic conditions, such as asthma or other um, illnesses, it's definitely worth checking in with your GP earlier um, and also sticking to any emergency sort of map management plans that you already have in place. Okay, next question. Now, what if I'm pregnant? Um, am I more at risk? Look, what they seem to be finding, and, and also all of this information, we're learning more um, every day. So um, they're finding that pregnant women don't seem to be at any more risk than anyone else in the public, um, which is fantastic. And they're also finding that when they do get coronavirus, they're not getting any sicker. So when a pregnant woman gets the flu, they often do get a lot sicker, even if they're healthy and, and well usually, um, but with coronavirus, they're not. So that's another really positive positive um, piece of information that we know. Yeah. And what happens if a mum is breastfeeding? Um, mothers, I guess, are more at risk of becoming sick from the virus and the babies. And what if the mum is breastfeeding? Yeah, look, there have been two schools of thought on that, but I think the, the um, vast majority think that it's better to continue to breastfeed Breastfeeding offers um, huge amounts of immunity to your baby. Um, but if mum's coughing and sneezing, wearing a mask is really important just to stop that transfer to the baby. And I realise masks are very difficult to get at the moment, but if you're able to get some um, from your healthcare professionals, if you're not able to get them from, um, from a shop, um, it's worth asking. Um, but certainly breastfeeding, there, there doesn't appear to be any um, transmission of coronavirus through breast milk. Um, and also there doesn't seem to be any transfer from mother to baby in utero, so before birth. Um, they have tested amniotic fluid and found it to be negative to coronavirus in mums who have active coronavirus. So that again is really reassuring. Okay, and so if you're hospitalised and you're separated from your baby, mums can still express breast milk for them? Absolutely, yes. Yes, yes please do. <laughs> and um, the other thing we were mentioning before um, offline is it's, there's recently been some, some cases overseas, and as you mentioned, but nothing's been um, confirmed that it, that it actually can pass with the fluid. Is that correct? It, it looks as though mothers cannot pass it to the baby um, when the baby's in utero. Yeah. Um, there was a very recent case in London where um, only minutes after birth, the baby was swabbed and found to have coronavirus and they're still looking at how that might have happened. But certainly in um, around 140 um, Chinese mothers, um, there was no transmission between mother to baby. So at the moment, we're sort of going with that advice. Yeah. But what if a mum or a young mother is using or parent is using formula? What's your advice there? Look, if, if they're using formula to feed their baby, um, really sticking to the normal rules around um, cleaning and sterilisation of the bottles and um, making sure their hands are washed um, and that every, you know, the bench is nice and clean before starting. So if you're sticking to those normal rules, uh, there's really no risk of transmission transmission of the coronavirus through the bottles. Yeah, it's just, it's just extra sterilisation of the bottles and all of the equipment, um, even more so? Yes. Okay. Uh, look, if you're doing it properly to start with, it, you shouldn't need to do any extra. Yeah, okay. And what about if families are concerned um, and they're having health issues, but are having um, issues with accessing healthcare professionals? Um, you know, I guess for hospitals and, and general GPs, um, 
are likely to be overwhelmed with people um, in the same situation, but where a parent has, um, has a newborn um, and, and understanding everyone's just as important as one another, um, what would you sort of recommend, I guess, for any, any parent with a newborn who's having issues with accessing healthcare or if the baby gets yeah, sick? So try, probably trying their straight away their, their own doctor or GP practice, so trying to phone them first. Um, there is also a corona um, hotline if you think that you yourself or your child um, could have symptoms of coronavirus. And I believe there was an announcement as well that there's going to be some bulk build um, uh, online consultations with some doctors and nurses. We're just waiting to find out all the details uh, around how to access that at the moment. Yep. Okay, wonderful. Um, and how about the situations where parents have got to go to work and um, they, they, they have their children in, in daycare or childcare? Um, you know, how are they best to, in that instance, protect their, their, their young ones? So at the moment, we're all the, nearly all of the childcare centres um, and kindergartens and schools and things are still running as usual. Um, if your child was sick, we wouldn't want them to be attending, or if you were sick, um, because there's that risk of transmission. But we know that children and babies put everything in their mouths. So there is, I guess, a higher risk of transmission in a childcare centre with young children um, than perhaps between adults who are a little bit better with their hygiene practices. Um, if you're able to keep your children home, that's fantastic. Um, it's very much a personal decision though. Um, you will still have to pay for your childcare uh, and many people, their children at child, are at childcare because they're working. Um, many people are frontline workers as well who aren't able to um, take time off or work from home as easily. Um, and of course, quite a few of the parents are our healthcare professionals and our um, people who are delivering really important roles at the moment that we need to. So if, if everyone took time off, you know, we, we would have trouble. A lot of trouble, yeah. So as you mentioned, mm. infants are really sharing saliva with like touching of other toys and all those types of things. So it's more that when the parents are picking their children up, should they, they should actually do, I mean, a full wipe down of the child before they put them in the yes. car. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, it's probably worth doing that, at least face and hands. Uh, when you get home, you know, bathing them would be a great idea, or at least changing them out of those clothes and a, a good top-to-toe -to -toe, um, clean Yes, because they really do share a lot of saliva. Yes, yeah. they do. <laughs> but as you mentioned <laughs> before, you know, the childcare um, educators are obviously well-versed with making sure that they, they are clean throughout the yeah. day. It's not going to hurt, hurt by just before putting them in the car, wipe down, and make sure go home straight <laughs> bath. <laughs> now yes. I have a question, but this is something that's um, I, I'm I'm not sure it hasn't really come up in the media all too much at the moment. But anti vaxxers okay, I've said it. I've said it. Anti vaxxers What's your <laughs> opinion? And what advice can you really share um, about this? Look, my advice is the same for everyone. I'm, I, it, it's a really important thing to have your children vaccinated against those diseases that we are able to protect them from. Um, and now more than ever, it'd be really good to make sure that your children are up to date with the Australian schedule. Um, if you think they're behind or if you had been not wanting to do that and may have changed your mind, now's a really great time to seek support. So you can get that from your GP or many council services also offer um, vaccination and immunisation. Um, there's that risk that they could get coronavirus and another disease at the same time or another infection at the same time and that would be much harder to combat. So it is a good time. And look, that actually relates to parents as well. Um, and the flu vaccine should be coming out in April um, we don't have a date on that yet, but that's definitely something to look at getting for you, both yourself and your children. Okay. So, but that's only going to obviously protect us from the flu. But is that in that instance, when, this is just a general question, people a lot of times say when they get the flu jab and they start to feel sick, which is, is that something that they should be concerned about? They, it doesn't by any means reduce their immune system, though, does it at all? No, not at all. Um, it's, it's, 
absolutely fine. The flu vaccine itself can't really give you the live flu. Um, it's often by coincidence that people have some of those um, side effects. Sometimes you were just getting the common cold at the same time as having the flu vaccine as well. So no, it's not a reason not to get the flu vaccine. And actually they've found that if you get it every year, it increases your protection. Um, and it's definitely worth talking to your GP or your doctor um, about having your children vaccinated as well for flu. So you wouldn't want to get the two at the same time. Um, and I guess it's also worth mentioning that just by following all these rules with the hand washing and the social distancing and um, they've actually found overseas that it's reduced the cases of flu as well because these same, it's, it's a similar spread. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so that, that's coming out in April, you said? Yes. Just around the corner. We're, we're awaiting it. We don't have a date. <laughs> and the other thing <laughs> I wanted to ask you about as well is how can we keep our grandparents safe? So in instance, as we just mentioned mm. earlier, about that you know, so many parents um, aren't in a position through the... Um, through their job to be able to sort of look after their children at home, um, where grandparents are in, in a lot of circumstances, I guess, the, the next choice. What's, what's your yeah. advice look, it's, how to keep them safe? It's probably a time to look for alternative childcare arrangements. So friends and family who might be a bit younger are less at risk of developing a really severe corona disease. Um, anyone over the age of 60 is at an increased risk and the older they become, the greater the risk. So um, probably relying on them for childcare at this time isn't the best idea. And um, yeah, looking for, you know, maybe you've got family or friends who can all help each other out a little bit. And looking at that now before we have more closures of schools and childcare centres and, and businesses is probably a good idea so that you have a little bit of a plan in place. Um, it may need to change. We all have to be flexible at the moment. Um, but just trying to get a bit of a plan in place is a good idea. Yeah. So if we were to paraphrase everything that we've just spoken about today in a snapshot, please just give us a little bit of an overview from your perspective, from a healthcare professional's perspective. What should a, a parent who either has a newborn um, or expecting a newborn and, and or I guess any parent with a, with a young child be considering and should be doing in this, in this moment? I think trying not to be too alarmed. Um, I think everyone's got a little bit of extra anxiety at the moment wondering what's going to be happening. We, we're lucky we're not the first country to get this. We've seen how other countries and other health professionals and communities have dealt with this disease. Um, so we're, we are in a, in a good place to be able to make some really great decisions for our community. Um, following along and checking up on the government websites, uh, the Australian government websites is probably a good idea. You know, once or twice a day, just getting a bit of an update. Watching TV all day isn't a great idea at the moment because there are so many updates. It's likely to just increase your anxiety and your children's anxiety too. Um, and they are repeating a lot of the same information. So switching it on every now and then is fine, but I wouldn't have it on all day. Um, so following along on those prevention measures, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands, um, and stay up to date with what's changing as well. Yeah, so really by protecting your children, you're protecting everybody around them um, and those who are more likely to be more vulnerable to, um, to contracting the virus. Um, more so Absolutely. Well, I'm really, really honoured to have your time today. Um, and we'll pop in, um, of course, in the introduction paragraph, a link to your article, which everyone should have a, a quick read of. It's fantastic. And the other phone number is, um, as well that you had mentioned earlier on the coronavirus um, is it a hotline, hotline. phone number? Yes, I believe. Yeah. Yes, it is. It's the coronavirus hotline. <laughs> hotline. Hotline bling. Yes. Um, <laughs> we'll pop that in there. Um, but um, for everyone else, please just be well. Um, it's really um, 
for us to just follow the rules, just to colour inside the lines for a little while. Um, the rules are there um, for, for the right reasons. Um, so just keep washing our hands, stay safe. Um, and I think above all, just don't forget to be kind to others. We are all in this yeah. together. So take care. Yeah. Um, give my love to the kids. Um, and just <laughs> know that we'll be doing everything that we can to keep delivering some evidence-based information to you to help um, through this difficult time. So take care and uh, have a wonderful day. Any other questions, pop them in the, um, the, the comments down below and I'm sure Belinda will be available to answer them. Take care and have a great day. Give my love to the kids. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>